Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the June meeting of the Health and Wellbeing Board. Um, before we start, um, before we do apologies, a few welcomes. So welcome to Councillor Mafuz, uh, who joins us in his new role as Cabinet Member for Safe and Generally Affordable Homes. Um, and Councillor Anand, who is on her way, joining us as the new Cabinet Member for Tackling Inequalities. Um, and I think other than that, we have no changes, although we do have, uh, which we will come to, a new representative from Health Watch, uh, which is fantastic. Um, so welcome to Jamie and to Carleen, which I'm hoping I remember because the sign, the sign is just, I was hoping I remembered it correctly. Um, so welcome to you both. Um, and we'll come to your update shortly. Um, in terms of apologies from absence, we have apologies from Councillor Mason, um, Councillor Allen for lateness, um, from Neha and from Anna Bryden. Um, I think that is all the apologies I'm aware of. Um, there may be others which we can add uh, later. Urgent matters um, I normally skip over um, and, and, and would do otherwise, uh, but today was the initial deadline for submission of our Better Care Fund submission uh, for 2324. Um, and Kerry, you have an update on that. Thank you, Chair. So um, colleagues will be aware that the Better Care Fund plan and associated documents for 2324 and 2425 were due to be signed off um, and sent to Better Care Fund National on today, the 28th of June, 2023. Ealing Council had completed the necessary paperwork and documentation to meet this timescale. To, um, however, Northwest London Integrated Care System has taken a unilateral decision to delay the completion of the BCF um, for all its Northwest London systems and partners. There's been scant communication between Northwest London um, ICS and local authority partners um, in this decision making process. And um, there's no agreement to the position that's been taken by the ICS with regard to the delay. This will be the first time that Ealing Council and its partners have not submitted the BCF on time. And there's a risk that the, as a result, that the plans will not be assured by um, BCF National. Um, this poses risks in terms of allocation of funds and resources and planning with regard to the BCF. I um, wanted to share that with um, the Health Wellbeing Board today, um, and we will be writing as a council to um, BCF National Organisation setting out the position of the council with regard to the decision-making of the Northwest London Integrated Care System. Thanks, Kerry. Um, it's just not, I think, a situation we wanted to find ourselves in. And I think we are disappointed that the partnership working seems not to have worked at, on this occasion. But um, I think discussions are ongoing um, between various parts of the system. And just to say, Chair, the partnership for the BCF prior to the creation of the integrated care system was excellent. We've all, always worked very closely as a partnership system and completion of the BCF. So it's, a, a, as you say, a real disappointment. We will obviously, oh, Simon, you have a question on that. Well, not so much a question as a bit of context, I, I, I suppose. I've obviously not been directly involved in any part of the other decision making that brings us in, uh, in into this position. But I th do think it is worth putting the ICS context in it in the sense that as I understand it, they were they were making the decision to review the BCF across all eight boroughs and, and eight lo local authority contributions within North West London. The national timetable for the BCF submission has been brought forward this, this year. At the time that they made the decision, they, they hadn't anticipated that timetable coming forward. So, so I think their expectation was that they, they would have undertaken the review in, in time. I do think, though, there is an issue about communication uh, with, with the local authorities because because Ealing's not alone in this frustration. I've heard the same because I sit in the same sort of meetings in Brent and Harrow, and and it's exactly the, it, it's exactly it, it's it's exactly the same position. My my hope and expectation is there is no material change in terms of the the BCF in in this financial financial year, um, and and that we will get the funding that that we are anticipating, but it is absolutely disappointing that we're unable 
to 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 meet that 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 timetable. So so I'm just going to give that context rather than ask a question per se. Thanks, Simon. I think the point about communication is is um, a, a good one, um, and I think similar comments are being made at Hill, uh, Hammersmith's Hammersmith's Hammersmith and Fulham's Health and Wellbeing Board tonight um, at almost exactly the same time. I think. Um, so as you say, it's similar similar discussions having happening across Northwest London. So I think that's all on that. We'll obviously update members as we hear more and if there's any movement and, and what the kind of the final outcomes are. Uh, are there any, I don't think there are any declarations of interest. There aren't normally. Oh, DJ. No, no declarations. I just wanted to just follow on what um, Simon said. Certainly from the, our uh, borough pace partnership, as, as, as um, Kerry knows, you know, we work very closely to ensure that the Elins um contribution to bcf from our perspective you know we've got you know we've put everything in order in terms of our submission you know clearly from an ics position um it was a you know, a collective decision in terms of making sure that um all the bcfs across eight of the boroughs um were were in readiness um for the end of this month that has not been the case and hence, you know, the the delay in its submission and the, the anticipated submission will be at the end of end of July from an from an ICS position. Um, and it's partly to do with regards to the review of the 22-23 BCF um, in terms of what the ICS wanted to look at, um, how that um BCS for 2023, what, what were the outcomes and the and the value for money and the and the benefits for the population across Northwest London? Um, and that that has also had some impact in the delay in the 23-24 submission um, as well. So yes, I, I, I accept that there may have been um a lack of communication or a breakdown in communication collectively across across the eight boroughs, but the intentions were all there and the intentions were all right, um, but we are just in that situation now. Thanks, Peter. That's a helpful context. Um, so moving us on, I didn't think there were any declarations of interest. Um, no matter speakers are in private. Um, so are people happy with the minutes of the meeting from the 10th of May? Those of us that were there, I know we've had some changes in membership. Agreed. Wonderful. I shall sign those. Um, so I shall hand over to Jamie and to Carleen for their Health Watch update. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, for those of you I don't know, my name is Jamie Walsh. I'm Director of Health Watch and Engagement Services for Your Voice and Health and Social Care, who have the Health Watch healing contract. Um, and I just wanted to attend tonight to formally introduce our new area manager, Carleen Duffy, who's sitting next to me. Um, so Carleen is officially taking on the role on the 1st of July, um, and she comes from leading our Healthwatch Hammersmith and Fulham service for the past two years, and will be taking on that joint responsibility for Healthwatch Ealing as well. Um, so strong experience and leadership and um, obviously very helpful. She's got some of the relevant partnerships and networks with, with particular providers and other partners. So um, I'll hand over to Colleen just to give a brief update on some of our live pieces of work and um, the work plan for this year. And it would be very helpful if any partners wish to comment on in particular some of the research studies that we're thinking about for this coming year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Um, yes, yeah, so as you're aware, I do not officially start until the 1st of July, so I may not be able to answer all of your questions. Um, we have recently published the Black, Asian and Minority Ethnic Experience Report, looking at GP experiences of members from the Black, Asian and Minority Ethnic communities. Um, we'll be discussing this with key partners on how to co-produce recommendations, um, and it will be followed up with the Race Inequality Committee. Um, some of the work we're looking at for 2023 and 2024, uh, a young people obesity study, um, uh, young people looking around sexual health services, 
uh, maternity experiences of refugee, asylum seekers, and migrant women, um, and consider and integrate in the cost of living crisis, um, i.e. Uh, traveling outside of the borough to hospitals. Um, and of course, we'd look to get feedback from partners on how we can align with borough priorities. Um, we have agreed with our social care colleagues on our interim views. We're looking at four good nursing homes and four nursing homes that require improvement. Um, and the overall aim is always to draw good practice across the sector and then highlight any themes of where we can make improvements. Um, our patient experience program has recently undergone a new development. We've got a new database and, and we're able to pull together different themes and trends. Um, we're working at further de developing that as well. So um, it's going to give us the chance to do additionally commissioned pieces of work. Um, where our volunteer commitment to recruit internally across Elin is continued. Um, and we have recently published our annual report for Elin, um, which is available on the website and is available, I think, uh, if it needs to be distributed across the group. Hopefully, Councillor Blacker, you received an email copy, Keith, that copied you in, so like we can make sure and double check that it, it's fully circulated. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Was, was anything else? Sorry. Uh, no, just would be looking for you know feedback and steerage on work priorities that they align with the borough. Great. Thank you, um, and welcome. Um, I think. Having that kind of link with Hammersmith was really good. because so I think at our last meeting, we mentioned some of the comparator data. And I think when we looked at the patient experience from, I think it was Charing Cross, it was a very small sample of Ealing residents who were using it. So getting that wider context of kind of, you know, very small sample doesn't give us much information, but adding adding on the additional um, context would be really helpful. Um, I don't know if that will be possible. Um, actually, it's, it's really interesting you mentioned that because in the last quarter, in HNF, two thirds of the people using Charing Cross are from out of borough. That's because we've got so many, so many residents. We we take all their care home residents. They can take all our hospital um, residents, at least from this end of the borough. Um, I know Southall um, more users of Ealing, um, but great. Any questions then for or suggestions or comments on the work plan for for Jamie and Carleen, Kerry. Thank you, Chair. I think the interim view programme is a key aspect of how we're supporting the quality of the care market in Ealing. We know that Healthwatch has been instrumental in terms of supporting some improvements within the care home sector. So I think to look to bring back how the impacts of the um, interim views of support, supported care provision quality would be really helpful later in the year. Yeah, no, the Munster report last, last meeting was really helpful um, and kind of Obviously, there's no correlation between an interview and a in, in, increase in the CQC rating, but it can't have helped. It can't have hurt. Can't have, can't help. Can't have hurt. Um, the coffee machine at work was broken today, so I'm I'm all over the place. Um, great. Any other, Jasper? Yeah, I just wanted to add thank you for the work that you all do, and it'd be really interesting to see how your BAME experience report then integrates with the um, Race Equality Commission and the recommendations that we're working as a bar and those priorities. It'd be really great to catch up with you at some point to see if that is really working and can we make uh, more priorities easier for us to be able to work along together on those. So be happy to work, happy to be able to work with you all. Great, and then I've got Simon and then Councillor Mafuz. Yeah, it'd be helpful to understand a bit more in terms of how you're going to undertake the, the maternity experience, because uh, obviously Ealing Hospital doesn't provide direct uh, 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 maternity services on site. So, so, so are you doing it on an Ealing resident basis or are you doing it on a sort of uh, picking one of, one of the key sites where patients from Ealing might be going to, to, to uh, access maternity services? Thank you. Um, so the detail of, of the project hasn't been bottomed out yet, but we would likely do several visits to the out of borough hospitals and obviously hope to meet Ealing patients. But, um, you know, we will have to accept that some of the patients we talk to may be from other boroughs. But the 
the experience and the feedback they give should be indicative. But our aim would always be to talk to eating residents. And depending on where we visit, sometimes there are large waiting areas and we can kind of work through and identify the specific eating residents. So we do need to develop that project plan and approach in more detail. But that is, a, you know, one possibility about how it might pan out. Sure. And, and, and I suppose for that one in particular, Lincoln, it, you mentioned the cost of living sort, 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 sort of implications and, and side impact. Then, then, then there's clearly some potential overlap between those, those, those two studies. So, so again, the, the, the brief right, I, I think, is probably quite key. And I don't know whether there's any, any chance, I'm looking at John here, to link up with some of the working children's centres and get people patients there rather than at the hospital to make sure that we're getting eating residence views mm -hmm. uh, but i'm sure children's services can can assist with some some suggestions yeah i think we are um hoping to really focus that piece of work on women from refugee migrant and asylum seeking communities so identifying those local groups here will be really key to that great uh councillor mafuz yeah, sorry, I think, yeah, I, that's what I put down in terms of the maternity services, but it was specifically for those communities, wasn't it? So it wasn't. So I think in terms of, and, and clearly there'll be the additional impact of having to, obviously, very, very limited incomes if they're in those groups. So actually, the cost of living crisis will particularly hit hard, given that they have to travel further to other locations for the uh, for the midwifery support that they, they would be entitled to for those sort of six to six or so months in, in the run-up to giving birth and so on so i think that's that's particularly key uh, i think they, they also are going to be great carlene or jamie just to get a, a, a list of those um uh, and in terms of i guess time scales for when you need to obviously you know, move it on to the next stage and develop that brief and, and progress it and i think in terms of particularly young people obesity study if there's anything that we you know linking back to our leisure and uh, and obviously public health offer locally clearly you know we'll have we'll have a crossover there uh, and i think one of the you talked about young people's sexual health clearly something that's been on on the rise uh, recently so identifying what things we can do locally and i guess there'll be obviously information more nationally about what we can try and tackle uh, in terms of, sort of trying to reduce that going forward but it seems like there's obviously cross good yeah, uh, across work with what we we've got in terms of priorities as a as a local authority, but it'd be, yeah, it'd be great to, if you could take play that in when you've got a chance to do that. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. That was really helpful. I think we've tried to do an assessment of some of the documents or information that we're going through today as well. But with Carleen now on board, I know she wants to do a review of all these kind of key documents and plans to make sure we've got that strong alignment. Um, just because you raised it, I just um, we did a, a similar study on sexual health services in Hounslow, which was completed quite recently in Healthwatch Hounslow, um, looking at the pharmacy services and the provision that they were supposed to be supposed to be providing to young people in the community. It really, really interesting outcomes that's uh, and findings that are feeding in strongly to the procurement of that service, uh, you know, and lots of significant changes based on that. So again. We want to have make sure we have those full discussions here and um, to see if we can benefit from from some of that learning. Great, thank you. And finally, Councillor Nagpal. Thanks, Chair. Um, well, firstly, Colleen, welcome to your role. Um, you mentioned that you want to know about how, you know, what you've said aligns with the Council's priorities. And, you know, as Cabinet Member for a Fairer Start, um, I would say that you mentioned the Young People Obesity Study. I'd definitely be interested in hearing more about that either here or, or outside of here. Maybe we could have a discussion about that and the sexual health work that you're doing in that space too. Great. There's nothing else. Thank you both very much. Um, and we look forward to you formally starting, Carleen, um, but you are obviously um, very welcome here beforehand. Um, I think we have Cassandra online who's um, the head of strategy for the Northwest London Integrated Care Board. Um, very warm welcome to you. And you're going to take us through the draft strategy for the ICS, um, which I and I think this is our this is our kind of formal consultation as a health and wellbeing board. 
That's right. Hi, everyone. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you for your time today. Um, so I'm Cassandra Doris and Head of Strategy for the Integrated Care Board. And we've been working on this um, draft ICS strategy for the last few months and we're now in the engagement phase. Um, we've shared some slides. Um, I know that people would have gone through these already. Um, I don't know if people have copies in front of you. Sorry for not being in the room. I uh, can't actually see. That's right. I think everyone has access to a copy. Okay. I'll do a quick run through. Um, and if anything's unclear, do yeah, put your hands up and ask questions. Um, so the general purpose of the strategy, it's um, the to run through the headlines, we're looking at putting together the health and care strategy objectives. So it's not just focusing on health and it's focusing on areas um, where we can partner together so that it's the strategy is actually overseen by the integrated care partnership um, and that's where it's bringing the local authorities and the health service together you'll probably hear uh, or see it referenced quite a bit through the materials we provided today um, but the strategy overall is looking at those areas where we can go further and faster together and it's not a, a, an expansive overview of, of all the areas that either the local authorities or care systems or health systems deliver um, so by saying that we are pulling together priorities that are seen as priorities for all boroughs in Northwest London um, and the health service and where we can all work together to improve and go further and stretch, et cetera. Um, and the engagement phase that I just mentioned, um, and I'm trying to be super brief, but do you make me pick some of these bits up if I'm running to this too quickly. Um, the engagement phase we just talked about. So there's a draft strategy paper that I think has been shared and that's published online. It's quite extensive. We, we know that it's very long. Um, it's uh, that's a full encompassing view of the of the whole draft strategy as it stands. But we've also provided one page summaries and those one page summaries um, go through each program of work. And they are meant to be um, a bit more of an, an easy read than the full um, strategy document. So if there are areas that you have a particular interest in, or um, if you want to make life a little bit easier for yourself and going through those drafts, those summaries, that's a really good place to start in terms of going through that engagement. Um, at the moment, through these engagement phases, we've gone to other boroughs' health and wellbeing boards. We've gone to other boroughs' kind of key meetings. We've gone out to residents. We've gone. We've we've, we've launched a survey, etc. Um, and this is all to gather feedback. So we're not looking for any decisions at the moment or any major change. We're just looking to hear from you all. Um, anything we may have missed or anything we think we need to emphasize more um i think that so we then kind of or the slides sort of take you through how we've pulled this together and i think um we've covered almost everything we've drawn content from um so we go through the fact that we've gone through the jsnas um the health and well-being strategies and our programs and we've kind of pulled in all the insights we have to that and that started our foundation um we looked at the challenges that face Northwest London population and facing us as a system and responding to that. So when you've seen that, there's a, there's a couple of slides there with some data and graphs and they essentially say that the, um, the main challenges are that we, we've had, we've done well for about, we did well for about six years in terms of improving health, but that in the last year that's stalled and obviously we've had the effects of COVID. And so in some areas, it's actually first facing regression um, in terms of our service offer. Um, and then obviously we're seeing big challenges across some of the programmes in the health service. So we've got the shortages in workforce and there's variations in mental health provision. Um, and we hear a lot from our residents um, insight reports that access continues to be an issue, um, GP access and, and, and waiting times, et cetera, that I know isn't going to be a problem that we've all, we've all heard about and thought of. Um, so those challenges have really framed the content for, um, for the strategy. Um, and then we looked at Marmot. So the, um, the Marmot principles, obviously not all of them are relevant. Some of them talk about national tax policy in schools. So they are very important, but not necessarily for the health and care strategy. So we've removed those and we're left with measures that we could all work on from together. And they, they talk, go through those six areas of principles. So in the slides, you'll see that they talk about um, giving every child the best start in life, enabling all children and young people to maximise capabilities, healthy standard living for all, etc. And that's helped us pull together our framework. Um, 
I think it, it what we're looking for again is um every, again not 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 that everything is listed there is completely right and okay but that we've probably missed things and there are probably things that um you may feel are are included not in the best way or not in the not accurately and that's fine I think we just want to hear all of the feedback we possibly can when we've gone to some of the other health and well-being boards and boroughs people have um, kind of come back to us and said rather than giving us feedback here they'll come back to us formally with written with their kind of written response that's also fine um you may want to give me a little bit of feedback now that you've judged some of the materials before this meeting I can capture that um we're going to continue going to health and wellbeing boards and some of these other key engagement meetings that I talked about at the beginning through July. So I guess our ask is that we just have everything back by the end of July in terms of timings. Um, and obviously we want to make sure that everybody knows that all of this feedback um, has been incorporated. So we're going to be pulling everything together and working on an evaluation and we'll come back to everyone to say how that, how we heard the feedback, um, how that's, amended any materials or content as far as the strategy goes and how we're going to move from this draft strategy being a draft strategy to being a, a full published strategy um so i'll pause there i'm sorry if that was a whistle stop tour i wasn't too sure how long i had to kind of go through this i hope that was helpful that's absolutely fine thank you um i think vj wanted to come in with yeah just, just just to add, add a little bit more so so in terms of the, the strategy i think what the strategy does try to describe particularly in the executive summary is the um the current position of health and and, and care uh, in northwest london and it's being quite open and frank and, and honest in terms of um the challenges that we face um as well as the uh the deficits in in in, in how and what and where we're delivering uh, health and care uh, to the population of Northwest London. Um, it's it's still in draft, um, as Cassandra said, and really we you know we continue to have that engagement with the with, with all of the health wellbeing boards as well as the borough based partnerships across uh, Northwest London, um, so that we can then have that our final strategy by the by the end of the end of the summer. Um, and I think it's Im important that the strategy. Um, aligns with the, the health and wellbeing board strategies across the eight boroughs. And, and that can be quite challenging to do that. Um, but, I, but I do believe that this strategy does make a good attempt to ensure that we have that level of alignment um, with the health and wellbeing board strategies for, for the eight of the boroughs in North West London. Great, thank you. And I think, yeah, I think certainly with our own health and wellbeing strategy, there are obviously very clear parallels in the Tackle, the, the focus on tackling inequalities um, and the outcomes against the health equity framework. So that is very helpful to see. Um, thoughts from other members of the board, Carleen. Yeah, I, I would say that um, the, the strategy, I'm, I'm glad by the way that it's short now because I did read the 100 page one. Um, the, the strategy largely covers everything that we have heard, definitely in H&F, apologies, I still have my H&F head on. Um, but the I think there's a little bit missing maybe around digital access. Um, just I know particularly that I've just done a report on patches and there was just a lot of stuff around, um, particularly people for whom English is not a first language. There's there's just not that support or that provision there, um, and and it's used across all eight. Kerry, I don't Cassandra's. I can see she's kind of typing or writing, so I shall let others come in and, and, and you can keep collating feedback if that's all right. Thank you, Chair. I, I, just to agree with VJ in terms of the comments with regard to the complexities of dealing with the North West London overarching strategic position for the ICB ICS, but the importance of the e-link system to be clear in terms of the specific needs and, and the variation in and need and service offers in the borough. I, th I think strong alignment, as, as both VJ and yourself have said, Chair, in terms of with the health and wellbeing strategy, which is really positive, um, but the influence and then the implementation function of the borough-based partnership is going to be absolutely key within this um, strategic planning. Councillor Anand. Chair, just to say that on page eight, there is still a 19% gap, which indicates that there 
uh, residents or the communities are telling us that are, they are not being treated equally. We emphasize a lot in, uh, in this report, reducing the inequalities is a golden thread, but it would be good to see how that marries up with our strategy and how we are addressing those inequalities through this report. Councillor Mathews. Thanks. Uh, yeah, and, and certainly, yeah, in terms of Carleen's point there, picking up on that point about people being able to make appointments easily versus actually almost half of people saying they make it, found it very, very difficult to make an appointment. So clearly some of that, particularly COVID and post-COVID implementation of having to use the app, I mean, for, for some people that's really easy, for others it's, it's clearly a, a significant barrier, but there'll be other reasons why also that they can't get a GP appointment. Just going to some, uh, just going to slide ten in the framework, or, or uh, page twenty on the, uh, the agenda, and in terms of some of the suggested outcomes, uh, and I haven't got the answer for this evening, but picked up in terms of the sort of households in temporary accommodation being a an outcome, or, or sort of being directly linked to ensuring people have a healthy standard of living for all, and of course we would want to have minimise the number of people in temporary accommodation. But actually, I think there's probably a more appropriate measure from a housing point of view of people in bad accommodation versus temporary accommodation, because actually temporary accommodation isn't in itself uh, a poor standard of accommodation. It's obviously clearly not where people would want to be because it's not permanent. It's not necessarily at the right rent, uh, levels of rent. Uh, some of the landlords may not be uh, brilliant, and uh, but I think something more around actually the, the quality of the homes that people are in, and obviously we, we're doing... A lot of work about making sure that we are licensing private rented properties across the borough. Um, other boroughs may choose to do so, but certainly I think it's a, about the quality of the, the property rather than the the label that's uh, given to it. That might we might look for a more suitable outcome to to measure across the northwest region. Thanks. Thanks. Um, oh, sorry, Cassandra. Did you want to kind of comment or? No, no, I was just saying that was very helpful to hear. Thank you. I'm just trying to capture as much as possibly can. If they're on the, on a the temporary accommodation point, it would be really, it, might, it may be helpful to talk a little bit about that or, or hear anything, if anything could be sent through on um, ways that you would want us to more appropriately talk, mention um, any of the kind of health and care limitations of how we talk about housing in particular in the framework. I think, oh, excuse me, I'm going to. Um, one thing that I don't, don't think comes through in the slides, but I know I have seen reference to elsewhere, is the commitment to London living wage. Um, and I think, as this board knows, we have moved to ensuring we pay London living wage rates for domiciliary care workers. Um, care home workers um, is a bit trickier, given the, as Kerry said, that kind of the, the, the system um, in Northwest London and, and kind of the, the import of care home residents from out of borough so that other boroughs are paying for care in our borough, um, over which we have little con 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 um, uh, contractual control. Um, so I think if that commitment can come through the strategy that the, the entire system should be paying London living wage, I think would be very helpful um, for us to then persuade our partners that any care home in Ealing must be paying the London living wage. Um, so I think, you know, we know that um, decent employment unlocks so many of the kind of health outcomes, um, as does housing. Um, so it's good to see kind of taking that wider approach. Kerry, again. And, and just to say, Chair, provides stability within the market. I think we know that local people work in the local care sector. We know there's a significant positive health health outcome, but stability within the care home market is a really important aspect as well. And I suppose the only other thing missing from this discussion is um, delivery. And we have, and I think one of the graphs in, in terms of the um, the wait, the elective care waiting list, and I know Simon is very always tell us very proudly how how well he's doing um, reducing his his waiting lists, um, but we are the system is still in recovery um, from COVID, um, and I think some sense of how we can ensure the system will deliver on all this because it is you know if we're talking tackling inequalities and delivering against all these um, health outcomes, it is very ambitious in one one sense that we have a system that we know is creaking at the moment, um, you know we have I think doctors striking nurses are no longer um but you know we know the workforce is under huge pressure 
um, both on the social care side and the health side. Um, so it, it, it feels like it's slightly out of context, this strategy, if, if that's a, a, a fair comment, that it doesn't quite, it talks about doing great things as if there aren't some very basic things that the system needs to grapple with. Um, and that's not a criticism of the system. It's where the system is in terms of where it's been born into. Um, so I think perhaps there is something in there just about recovery and getting our feet back on firm ground um, in order to deliver uh, on some of this ambition. Um, but that's a, a more of a general comment in terms of the context that can't be changed, um, but might need addressing um, some way. Terry. Is it also worth mentioning Health Accountability Board is meeting on Monday, which there will be discussion? Yes. So the, the political leadership of the eight boroughs will be coming together to discuss um, and come to some views, um, I'm sure, as well. Um, but as it's part of the wider engagement um, before before the ICP meets next. Is that helpful for you, Cassandra? Is there anything else you, you wanted a bit to kind of challenge us on in terms of our challenge to you? No, thank you. That's really helpful. Uh, you, you have the materials and there's also including those the link to the surveys. Please do share them far and wide if you think there are, are engagement opportunities or areas it going to where there'll be people and residents that may want to feed back into it. Um, as I say, it's kind of going on through to the end of July. You mentioned the next ICP meeting is that, is that um, uh, towards the end of the summer and th that they're kind of the general timeline. So um, we will kind of come back with the next phase of this once we've heard back from all boroughs and kind of collated everything together. Great, thank you. I know we hosted one of the, the kind of the sessions in Ealing Town Hall, um, the engagement, and I'm sure we can um, ask our comms colleagues to publicise again the, the opportunity to feed in. Um, so if there are no other comments, um, Cassandra, thank you very much for coming. Um, and I'm sure if, there, if we do have any other further thoughts, we will make sure they get to you um, in some way, shape or form. So thank you very much. Um, so moving on from the development of one strategy to the action plan for another, um, obviously last meeting we adopted formally the new, our new strategy, um, and we promised a first iteration of the action plan at this meeting, uh, which was an ambitious uh, promise, but we do not promise what we cannot deliver. Um, the only thing I can't deliver is Anna or Maddie to d deliver it, um, but I shall leave you in the capable hands of Kerry. Thank you, Chair. So the um, just in terms of a preamble, the health and wellbeing strategy was extensively engaged with partners in terms of the development and the programme and really puts the building blocks of health and wellbeing at the centre of the work of the partnership and the system of healing, which is a huge step forward in terms of public health to bring it to a central position in terms of the function of the health and social care system and wider, wider functions within the borough of Ealing. Um, the um, work plan is attached and includes a um, clear breakdown of thinking and actions around the three main areas within the um, Health and Wellbeing Board strategy. These are putting communities of, at the heart of everything that we do, that systems and structures lead no one behind, and connecting the building blocks of health and wellbeing. Um, across the system to improve outcomes and the health and well-being of the communities that we serve. Um, there's been a lot of discussions. My colleagues in public health work on generational impacts, and, and that's great. They're planning for future generations, and that's a really important aspect of the public health agenda. But at the same time, it's really important that we maintain momentum as a system with regard to the outputs and the product of the work of the Health and Wellbeing Board. We're proposing to bring a update, hopefully early in the new calendar year to the Health and Wellbeing Board, um, showing evidence of impacts of the work of the Health and Wellbeing Strategy and how that has impacted on the lives of the communities that we serve. And we're proposing that there are three main areas for the um, focus of the strategy in the first year. The first of those proposals or, or areas of focus is um, looking at how we can um, focus the integration alignment of frontline services within health and social care 
um, to achieve better outcomes for the communities that we serve. Um, we're very conscious that there are some areas of overlap um, and opportunities to improve the cultural competence of services to support the communities we serve in Ealing. The second area is to focus on um, community development and community resilience within the focus of the health and wellbeing strategy as another block of focus for the coming year, building on the great work that's already been done around community champions, um, looking at um, a community design service, which has already been led within the council and expanding community practice of system wide partnership, but also increasing the voice of the community and how they influence services that we provide. And we've talked before about the review of partnership boards here. The last area is looking at um, using the health and wellbeing board strategy as a focus for the building blocks of health and wellbeing. We keep coming back to this as such a key point of work. Um, so there are three areas that we're proposing to look at, um, not to the um, um, denigration of the other areas of the, the, the programme, but just so that we can have a clear focus and promote areas of work that's occurring in those areas because we expect some shorter term wins um, that we can bring back to the board. Um, we've, we've been through the strategy before. There's a lot of detail within this document. Um, happy to take any comments and questions in terms of the detailed pieces, but really looking for agreement for the um, work plan agreement for report back um, early in the new calendar year on progress against area of these work and as I said chair to take any questions or queries and I'll either answer them or feed them back to Anna Bryden who's more able to answer a lot of these questions than I am. I'm sure you'll be great thank you Kerry. Um, there is a question from Chris. Hi there um, I hope you can hear me okay and um... Uh, I didn't necessarily have a question as such, but wanted to uh, reflect from the borough-based partnership perspective that we have obviously looked at uh, earlier iterations of this document and, and really wanted to um, uh, endorse it and um, emphasise the, uh, the positive fact that we've got measurable success, me success measures uh, built into it so that we can actually be held to account um, uh, we'll hold ourselves to account but also you know be held to account for for some of the ambitions within it so um i i thought it was really positive that we've we've included that and uh and wanted to uh, again just endorse the work and and thank kerry's colleagues for um drawing it together thanks chris and i i, I probably should have reminded everyone that this isn't just kerry's and the public health team's um strategy or action plan it is uh one that is shared um, among all among the health and wellbeing board, which is us corporately um, as a, a statutory um, board. Simon. Yes, so, <clears throat> so, 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 so certainly echoes uh, support for the action plan and, and the success measures and, and that table. I, I suppose the challenge for us is, is yes, we're all signed up to the key, key, key issues with it, but but We've all, in a way, presented our own strategies at uh, over the last 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 couple of months. I know I was here probably two months ago. Chris, Chris was it last month? I think in terms of West West London, along alongside the councils. And I suppose we almost need a, a sort of bespoke. I don't know what do you call it a workshop, but but it spoke running through this as partners around what are the specific areas of overlap that we have got and and how do we collect the combined data to demonstrate what what we do it doing in this. Otherwise, it's relying on the council to try and sort sort of pull all this this together and 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 that'll be much harder if 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 we don't have a bespoke conversation around all the range of initiatives that we've got on the go that are supportive of this agenda. And I suppose Chris and his team, team, team will have, have the same, Nayar Nay, Nay and BJ Jay will have, have the same as well. And I think it'd be much stronger if we could do that rather than just rely on the council sort of data collection methods and, 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 and initiatives. Just a thought, Kerry, or Anna. No, I think it's a really good point. And I think um, Anna or, one of her team when we were talking about the health of the borough report we were talking about how some of the data some of the data sets don't necessarily match up 
um, and when we're looking at those things. So having that conversation would be really important, I think, to work out how we can best measure what we're doing. So I think, as you say, it's, it's you know, we, we already have success, success measures listed, uh, which is excellent, but we need to be able to actually measure them um, accurately between all of our partners. And I, and I wasn't going to comment on how many times, how, how often I've seen Ealing Council in the part, responsible owner um, versus other partners. But if if it if attention is being drawn to it, then then so be it. Um, Kerry, did you want to, pick up any of that or I, I think it's a really excellent point that Simon raises that we've seen a plethora of strategies in the last few months and we're going to see the ICB ICS strategy the benefit the, the positive from that is that there's a clear alignment between what's being said in the strategies in terms of community mm -hmm. development community resilience and and, and um, response to the, the the diverse and various needs of uh, the people living within the borough of Ealing. So I think that's really key. I think the important piece for us as an Ealing system, health and social care system and, and wider partners, will be ensuring that we're clear about what's specific about the needs of Ealing, what's specific about the health and wellbeing board strategy for Ealing when we're engaging on ICS strategies, etc. I know certainly when we have discussions with um, cross-cutting trusts such as uh, West London Trust there's a lot of cognizance and understanding of that but that's because they have a lot more on the ground um, engagement with us and as VJ said the barrel based partnership is a very strong and engaged partnership but it's, it's understanding how that interfaces with, with the, the, the more sub-regional strategies is the challenge and indeed how that cuts at a town level I shouldn't yeah. let you not say um, you were going to say that Ealing's and its towns um, Ealing and Sneeze and its towns Councillor Nagpal. Just briefly, Chair, um, the action plan looks great to me and I can see there's a lot of work's gone into this in such a short space of time. And I'm particularly excited to see the work that we're gonna do on the family hubs model and the implementation of the SEND strategy. So I think there is broad assent to adopting the action plan and, and agreeing the approach. Um, I think as the paper say, it's an iterative document, so that's not it for the next five years. Um, we will update and review and um, discuss progress and where things, where we might need to move resource or pull resource and, and change focus as we go through. Um, but Kerry, do feedback to the team, our thanks for pulling it together um, in just a few months um, from the adoption of the strategy. So thank you very much. Um, and it's back to Kerry. Um, <laughs> for the LGA Adult Services Peer Challenge response, um, which I think has a much better title on the agenda um, than the report itself. Um, Adult Services Strategic Priorities, 23 to 25. Um, but just before Kerry starts, this is a, a, a really good piece of um, news for us in terms of a kind of visit from uh, the LGA uh, who came uh, all the way back in February now, but this was published formally last month at Cabinet. Um, and I will repeat what I said at Cabinet um, is that this and the eventual verdict of CQC on our services, the rating that we will get, um, are important in terms of an external benchmark, but they're not the only thing that's important to us. Um, and I think, you know, that is um, putting residents at the heart of what we do and improving their outcomes, which I think, Kerry, should lead nicely on to what you are going to say. Thank you, Chair. And um, as you say, this, this report came to Cabinet um, earlier in the month. Um, so it's already a, a published document. It is setting out the response or the beginning of our response to preparation for CQC preparation. And as um, Councillor Blacker has stated, a good outcome from CQC is not the driver. Uh, the driver is to improve outcomes and services experienced by the communities we serve in Ealing. And as a byproduct, a good CQC rating um, would be nice. Um, the um, council's preparation for CQC um, inspection regime, which is launching in September in a pilot model across three local authorities across the country, um, involved us engaging with uh, the local government association to complete a, a, a peer challenge, as it's described, which isn't a um, replication of the CQC process, but it's a... Um, a, 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 a a process that is similar, but we, we would never consider the outcome of the LGA peer challenge as a, as a true representation of the performance of the council and its partners in terms of what the CQC would, would see and find. Um, the um, LGA peer challenge was led by um, a lead officer from the LGA, 
a desk from Suffolk, uh, very experienced desk and senior members of staff um, within adult social care, including colleagues from Brent. Um, I think there's one from the Wirral, some from around the country and bringing in, as well as a cabinet member um, um, for adult social care. So it was a strong team that came in and saw us. Um, the peer channel process lasted three days. They met with staff, they met with people who use services, um, they met with um, the political leadership, they met with officer leadership within the council, and um, they drew together their conclusions in the report that is attached. Um, the report um, gave us some very clear learning. The, the whole point of the LGA coming in was to um, for them to give us an, an understanding of where we are as a service, to understand where the gaps are and how we can improve. Um, they also gave us some pod positive feedback. Um, the um, learning piece is being fed into the work plan for adult social care, which I think we're planning to bring back here in the autumn, which will set out a clear action plan in terms of how the service is responding to the challenges through the LJ Peer Challenge and also other adaptations and developments within the service going forward. Just to take you through some of the comments that were made, and, and this is at a high level and there's much more detail within the report, um, the Peer Challenge um, team were very impressed with the engagement and political leadership in terms of adult social care um, within Ealing. They thought that was very strong and very clear link between manifesto commitments and corporate plan which they thought was an important aspect of the organisation's work. There was um, felt to be strong safeguarding, which is absolutely key in terms of what we do in terms of our statutory duties within adult social care. They were clear that there's strong engagement with the provider market who provide the vast majority of the hands-on care to people who, who use our services. And they thought that we had nationally recognisable work being done with colleagues and children around transitions from young people transitioning um, from childhood into adulthood, which was really positive. And that was one that we weren't expecting because it was what we were doing as a partnership within adults and children. So that was really positive to hear. The, the other bit that was positive to hear is they talk very strongly about our self-awareness and our understanding of where our areas of weakness are. Um, one of the areas that they mentioned, which we're working on um, currently for development is our engagement and the voice of the user within um, the adult social care and carers. Um, again, through work with, and, um, with um, health watch and partnership boards, um, we're doing a lot of work to refresh and develop the partnership board framework so there is a stronger voice for users and carers um, within the service. So there's a lot here. There's a lot of information open to any questions, Chair, but what I'd propose that that we bring back the working programme to um, the Health and Wellbeing Board. And I think we're timetabled to go to um, um, health and social care scrutiny as well in terms of the work plan that's associated with the um, preparation for CQC, but also the action planning around um, the LGA Peer Challenge. And just to top it all, we're having an audit on our preparation for CQC as well. So <laughs> it's like a lot going on in this space, but thank you. And all the while, we continue to spend something in the region of £280,000 a day on, 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 on care. So with the business continues even as the, 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 the business of managing the business um, grows. Um, questions or comments from members of the board? Any? I think people want to... I was going to say Robert, but it's John Sorry. with with Robert's name in front of you, but it's John. Sorry. Um, just on the, the the voice of the user, if you like, um, because it's something we're increasingly focusing on in children's. I just wonder whether there's an opportunity to be more connected in how we approach that and have a an alignment of how we can work like that. We, we, in, for instance, we've just um, looked at a template another authority has developed to to send to clients that are racially abusive to workers and um and we're looking to adopt that because i think we're aware that some of our social work staff accept a lot and absorb a lot and actually they shouldn't um and there's a way that we can you know be firm with people without you know and know the context but actually no it's not appropriate and i just wondered you, you know you may experience that more because of uh, the client group that you may work with and just one with you know in terms of learning from each other and what we can do to have a, a more 
systematic approach, I suppose, across both our services. That, that, that's really helpful, John. We're taking the proposals for the um, refresh of partnership boards, co-production forums. Um, I think they've been to the borough-based partnership board. They're coming to SLT and political cabinet in the coming months. So there'll be the opportunity for discussion there. And more than happy, we've got very clear protocols about where individuals are racially abusive to start. Yeah. So happy to sort that through yeah. real time. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, I've got Chris and then Jamie. Thanks. Um, I, I thought it was a really helpful report and enjoyed, um, uh, I think I was interviewed for it, but also um, reading the, the outputs. Um, I think there are a couple of comments I was going to make. It, the, one was around the comment about the Argyle Care Home Service. Um, I, 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 was, I was really interested in the discussions element. This is at paragraph 42 um, about how that service, which um, is commissioned through Ealing Community Partners and West London Trust might link better with adult social care and, and um, the contracts manager and whether there's anything we can do further to take that forward as we uh, develop the service. Um, and then wearing my mental health hat, uh, also just wanted to acknowledge um, the conversations that we're having, the refresh, um, not a refresh, the replacement of the uh, Section 75 with um, um uh, collaboration uh, documentation um, and just acknowledging the the work that is ongoing the conversations that are ongoing and 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 welcome in a way the clarity um um of the, of the relationship between social care and mental health as, as we're uh, evolving that relationship thanks thanks chris kerry do you want to pick those up before we move to I, I it's a really interesting point isn't it chris because from within the system we work very closely with the Argyle Surgery and Tax. I meet with Dr. Anna Down at least once a month to talk about what's happening within the care sector. We've done a, since since the um, peer challenge, we've had a care home summit where tax and Argyle Surgery have been key to the process. So I think this is something where we've got clear evidence that we are working very closely with the Argyle and we've built on that since the peer review was completed. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Is we going to come back on something, or just? Uh, I can pick up with with Kerry outside the meeting. I, I completely commend the work that they do in the Argyle, and their their um, uh, innovation is is fantastic. But I guess the 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 contract supporting care homes is more than just the Argyle, because there there are elements of that um, enhanced uh, primary care and care homes model that we also commission through Marie Curie. Uh, we've got mental health support workers. We've got the infection prevention control. Um, support and a, and a few other elements. So uh, but I'm just keen to see how we can um, we can further strengthen it because I think Ealing's in a particularly um, unusual position of having not only a very high number of um, uh, care home beds, but also having this extremely unique model, uh, which which is clearly highlighted here as a piece of good practice. And I and I think it's something that we should um, continue to nourish. I suppose. Thanks. Um, I've got Jamie and then Simon and then VJ, but we'll see if we need to come back on things first. So Jamie. Thank you. Just quickly, just to highlight though, we had a national meeting with CQC just yesterday or the day before um, with Healthwatch around the new assurance process and the role that we are to play. Um, so our initial um, intentions are to review the I statements that they're going to use in the process and see how we can integrate them into our into our kind of current feedback processes. So perhaps once we've done that, Kerry, we can have um, uh, a check-in about our plans. Thank you. Uh, that's helpful. Simon was next to my list. Yeah, just to say, uh, to note, I think it's it's a it's a really good report, really positive. I, I note the strong comments on leadership and the focus on staff as well-being and the positive feedback from your own staff, which is clearly, clearly good. No doubt we might have something to learn from you, Kerry and team, in terms of that. Ours isn't always as as as, as strong as it in, indicated there. But Kerry, I, I, I'd be interested in, in their comments around the rebalancing of the workforce and uh, your 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 view on that and and also the 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 uh, recruitment around OTs etc and, and whether that's something you, you did want to consider taking forward in terms of a discussion well whether that's with us or 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 or, or, 
or Chris. Thank you. Just to say, Jamie, thank you for that information about HealthWatch's engagement with CGC and the I statements are an area that we, we know we've got a weakness in, in even from, from the peer review process and also the, the development of how we engage with people who use our services. So it's really useful to get that feedback. Um, Simon, it, it's an absolutely key point. Either some of the feedback we received from the peer challenge was that Ealing adult social care is overly dependent on qualified professional staff. Social work practice is absolutely key to um, what we do within the council, but there are also functions and activities that can be done by unqualified colleagues within the organisation. We do have a number, but, but we're looking to balance that up. Um, we're going through a recruitment programme currently to increase the number of unqualified workers. Um, I'm really clear that, that, that people who are unqualified tend to be Ealing residents. They want to contribute to their sure. community. There's an opportunity for them to develop and grow and potentially um, take on, um, if they wish, to go down professional qualification routes. So there's a real opportunity there and that's something that we're developing. Occupational therapy and social work recruitment and retention in Ealing as well as across Northwest London, London and the country is very, very challenging. Sure. I think that's in adults and in children's services we're experiencing it across the piece. Um, we're looking at the moment in terms of where there's overlap and it links back to the health and wellbeing board strategy and some mm. of our areas of focus around so things such as the reablement pathways. And we think there are overlaps there and opportunities for us to improve how we as a system work. So we'll, we're starting to get into that space um, if occupational therapists are doing something very similar in rehabilitation and reablement pathways. Is there an opportunity to look at doing something differently? So we're in active discussions with ECP with regard to that. Thank you. Uh, BJ. Yeah, similar to what, what others have said, in, in terms of what's in, in the report, there's clearly a, a number, a list of, cons of areas for consideration. I just want a little bit of understanding about how we're going to prioritize those, those considerations. And then you know, in terms of um, bringing them back to the health and well-being board in terms of where you know where where, where have we got to in terms of a the prioritisation and b the actions that that stem from these uh, considerations. Thank you, V. It is again. It's, an, it's another very valid point because they're, they're, they're a number of the considerations you can see them in terms of a hierarchy of risk. The front door CJSM processing are, are are high on our um list list of risks. So what I'm proposing is that we're going to bring back the work plan to a autumn um, meeting of the Health and Wellbeing Board. Um, we've also agreed that we're going to take the work plan to the Scrutiny Committee for Health and Social Services. And within that, it sets out, and I've already got the document, I just haven't shared it here in detail because it's not in a fit state as yet, but there's a clear prioritisation of the work that will be laid out within it. Great, and I think Councillor Mafuz was the only other hand I had up. Uh, thank you, Chair. No, I think just to reiterate some of those key messages there in terms of the strong, clear leadership, uh, which is fantastic to, to ha see and also have that recognised uh, by this uh, external peer review. And I think in terms of some of the key messages that I, I pick up from that is certainly that they, one of the things that you want to, to know is that we know ourselves, we understand what our strengths are, what our challenges are and where we need to focus uh, going forward. And I think that was very clear in terms of uh, one of the key messages. And also in terms of, you know, as, as with anything in health, this is not something which we are doing by ourselves, but also in partnership. And I think all of those, again, key strong, uh, strong key messages there in terms of that partnership work is there, it's working well, uh, and, and we're making sure that we're harnessing all of those you know, all of those partners to achieve better outcomes for, for clients. So I think uh, I appreciate that uh, Councillor Backer and uh, Kerry and the team will be very humble about the, the outcome uh, the response that we've got, but I think it's, uh, you know, it really, really um, pays, uh, it shows the dividends of all the, the work that you've you've put into, into this area. So huge thank you. Thank you. Um, but obviously, you know, we will be humble, but we also won't be complacent because this is a, a one time snapshot. Um, and, you know, Chris said some very nice things, I'm sure, to the to the reviewers 
um, at that time um, doesn't mean he always will and, and that we will always deserve them. So we will um, do our best to continue um, driving improvement, um, as we said, because um, I, I think, as we both said, you know, getting a, a green mark from the LGA or CQC is is, is just a bit of paper, um, but actually there are um, thousands of residents who whose lives should be improved by coming into contact with us. Um, there were, I think, three questions from Roy. Um, I think possibly two of them on on grow your own um, and um, co production may have been answered in other bits. But Roy, I don't know if you want to just just to reiterate what those what those were, and then certainly ask the third one on reviews. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I, I we were concerned about recruitment and retention. Uh, and the rates, we know how difficult it is across the whole care set, the whole social care sector to recruit staff. And uh, this phrase, grow, grow its own, uh, was quoted in the report several times. And uh, it was really a, a, a way of asking really, how is that to be done? I think you've talked about training and uh, internal training and uh, perhaps promotion and uh, sponsor, is there, does it involve sponsoring people to, to go on training for qualifications, etc. So that was one point. Um, the co-production uh, has also been mentioned. And uh, I think we, we're looking for some concrete examples of where that's going to be offered and delivered uh, and also how uh, the voices of, of, of those with lived lived experience is going to be heard in, in decision-making forums. Uh, partnership board, I know, are, are going to be refreshed and re-looked at. So that's that's um, a, a process we're very, very much involved in and very much uh, hope to see uh, come to fruition. And then one of our, our third point was... Uh, Really, one that wasn't be, hasn't been mentioned yet, but one that we've we've been concerned about for a couple of months, for several months, really, uh, about the backlogs in in reviews of care packages, <coughs> which was uh, seriously um, problematic, uh, especially within learning disabilities and mental health services. And uh, I know the the COVID problems uh, caused uh, lots of reviews to be difficult to organize but i just wondered whether that's going to be able to be the, the backlogs are they going to be reduced in time for whenever the cqc are coming down to uh inspect services because obviously that is one area that they'll look at uh quite closely out of the thought so that's that's really what i wanted to say great thank you and i mean on, on reviews it's something that i challenge carry on Monthly, actually, at our monthly monthly um, budget updates, because um, obviously making sure that people are getting the appropriate care at the appropriate point is an important part um, of what we do. Uh, but Kerry, did you want to just pick up any bits on the Grow Your Own, the co-production, and then pick up on how we're tackling reviews? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Roy, for your questions. Um, in terms of the Grow Your Own, we're very clear as part of our recruitment and retention strategy to provide opportunities for people um, to um, obtain um, professional qualifications if that's what they're interested in. We have an ongoing program of um, colleagues who are going through the training process currently for social. We, uh, we've got one who's currently in the social work training program. We haven't cu currently got anybody on the OT training program at this moment. Um, the grow your own bit is interesting in terms of how we provide opportunities for people in Ealing to um, progress their careers. I think it's something like 90% of the senior managers within Ealing have come through Ealing and have been here for a number of years and have progressed through um, different levels within the organisation, which is really positive. And I think that shows um, great engagement with the council and the communities that we serve. So, um, but I can provide you data on that, Roy. I know you like data, if that would be helpful. Um, in terms of co-production, the, the work that we're doing around the partnership boards and some of the proposals are that, um, as well as re refreshing and rebranding the partnership boards as co-production, 
forums, um, looking at restructuring a number of the forums where we've currently got an integrated older adults and physical disabilities partnership board to separate those. Um, and we're looking to, or we've got proposals to provide a route for the chairs of the partnership boards, people with lived experience, um, to come either through to the health and wellbeing board or to the scrutiny um, um, panel and present on behalf of people from the local community with lived experiences of our services. And we think that's gonna be a really important route. And it also gives a greater cohesiveness in the voice of, of the various groups that we serve through the current partnership board structure. So we think that will provide a strong framework. That's yet to be agreed, but we've got the proposals, as I mentioned earlier, will be coming to um, the senior leadership team and political cabinet of the council. In terms of the reviews, absolutely correct question, Roy. Reviews and, and backlogs at the front door have been a significant challenge for, for most London boroughs. And we've seen that in the statistics and the response from um, London ADAS in terms of challenges and concerns for directors of adult social care. As Councillor Blacker mentioned, this is part of our reporting framework that where I'm held to account by the um, um, cabinet member and the wider cabinet in terms of our performance. Um, we've put additional investment into our review service um, from existing staff. It's a bit of a challenge in terms of um, how we do that because of limited capacity. It means we're moving resource from elsewhere to deal with the review backlog. And we're current, I think we've just agreed um, that we're going to work with the third sector partner to complete reviews on our behalf and to try and deal with the backlog. As, as Councillor Blacker said, in terms of quality of experience and quality of um, life experience for people receiving services, and uh, it's, it's not a statutory duty to carry out um, annual reviews, but it is a preferred position. And that's something that we're working back towards currently. Great, and, and certainly, you know, not giving someone the care they need is, is a bad thing, but also actually not taking care when they've got better and when they become more independent is obviously something we want to do because we want people to live um, healthy, happy and independent lives as far as possible. So kind of keeping them under um, our services when they don't necessarily need to be um, is just as important um, for people's quality of life. Uh, any other comments then on that report? If not, thank you very much on behalf of Kerry and myself for your very kind comments on it. Um, it is it, it, it was a very pleasing report to receive um, when we did um, receive it. Um, but as I said, um, just because it says it at one time doesn't mean we will continue and we will continue to um, improve. And I will hold Kerry to account as, as much as I have done and to get to where we are today. I think last item is on the work plan. Um, I don't think there is a copy of the proposed work plan on the agenda, unless I've no. just missed a, no, there isn't. Um, I think we, meant, we, a few things have been mentioned in terms of bringing them back in the autumn. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll get a copy circulated for comment um, if there are any items or carry if there's a, any update that we need to give now. My apologies, Chair. I think Anna was going to provide a verbal update to the meeting, but unfortunately she's unwell. So um, if we could take that offline and we can share something with um, the, the members of the board. Very happy to do that. So if there are items people need to get onto that for September, please um, let Anna, Kerry and Keith know, um, and myself possibly. I do chair this thing. Um, other than that, thank you very much, everyone, for your time this evening. Uh, Welcome to you again, Carleen and Jamie, thank you for coming. Um, but I'm, we shall see you, Carleen, um, at our next meeting on the 20th of September. I got that right. Wonderful. Good. See you all then and have a wonderful summer. Thanks, everyone. Bye.